Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. So today we're just going to go over, do a review on typeset-l and our program for today is varsize1d.ksh and we're going to review typeset-l and the first thing we do is we create a variable called var1 and its contents are equal to this. And as you can see, it has three leading spaces. That's why I put these numbers up here. And the contents are seven characters wide, and there's a space at the end. Now, let's just print out the contents of R1, but we're going to do something special. We're going to put colons before and after the var1 variable, the contents of the var1 variable. Now, what this will give us when we print this out as is, is a colon, three spaces, ABC, one space, and then another colon. So putting these markers before and afterwards is a good way to see what the exact contents of a variable are. And afterward, we just print a blank line, and we say waiting and we read into a variable called nothing. And once again, this is just a little trick we use to wait for the person running the program to look at what's on the screen, deal with it, and then say, OK, I'm ready to go on. So let's run this, and it should stop. The program should stop right here. When we run it, we get the colon three spaces, ABC, space, and colon. And it's just waiting for us. Let's go back to the code. So once again, it did print out the colon, the three spaces, ABC, space, colon, blank line, and now it's waiting for us. Now after the read nothing, we are going to create a variable called var2. It's going to be nine characters wide, and we're using the typeset L. So that says that it takes in the first nine characters it sees, left hand side. And here's what we're going to do. After we create it, we're going to put the contents of var1 into var2 as such. Now remember, var1 had all those leading blank spaces at the beginning. And just as a reminder, we print out the contents of var1, and then we print out the contents of var2. And var2, once again, is created using the typeset L command. So let's hit enter and see what the output looks like. Once again, this is the output for var1, and as you can see, it's the same as up above. But when you look at var2, the contents of var2, you notice even though it took the contents of var1 as its input, it doesn't have those leading spaces at the beginning. And that's because when you use the typeset L command, it's going to strip off all the leading spaces, all the leading white space at the beginning from whatever you put into your variable. Now, reviewing typeset L, and in this case, specifically typeset L9 var2, we see that using this command, it will create a variable that will always be nine characters wide. The variable, when you try to put stuff into it, will ignore leading spaces and white space. It will read the first nine characters from the left, and it will ignore anything after that. And when it prints out, the output is left justified. In other words, the output is on the left-hand side. 
as we saw from our example right here. And this has to do with the fact that corn shell ignores the leading spaces.